In the previous video, I introduced the idea of a derivative, the way to write down the rate of change of a function. However, I haven't talked at all about calculating derivatives. They're just an idea so far. Then I talked about the idea of a differential equation, an equation about functions which involves a function and its rate of change. The differential equation is central to calculus, but at this point, I don't have the tools to jump right in and tell you how to solve them. However, there are some very clever techniques to understand differential equations without solving them. I'm going to introduce one of those techniques in this video, both because it's a great technique, but also to hopefully build up this new and strange idea of a differ differential equation. Let's start with a definition. Take some function p of t. I'm going to assume that it's a population function throughout this section, so its output is always positive, since negative population doesn't mean anything. It will depend on time. Remember, a differential equation is an, an equation which involves the function p and its derivative dp over dt. Let's say I can set up this equation so that dp over dt is on the left side, and the right side is some algebraic expression in the function p. Such a differential equation is called an autonomous differential equation. For these kinds of differential equation, there is a technique called a phase line analysis, which helps me understand the behavior. Here's the process. I start with an autonomous equation, where g of p is a way of writing the right-hand side in some expression in p. I'm going to look for the zeros of this right-hand side, the roots of the expression g of p. Since the right side is zero at those points, the left is zero as well. But the left is the derivative, the rate of change. And if the rate of change is zero, nothing is changing. So values of p, which give zero on the right, are values where nothing changes. These are called steady states. They are values of the population where it is static. Then I look at what happens between the steady states particularly whether the right side is negative or positive. I call this the trajectory of the population. If the right side is positive, the population is growing. If the right side is negative, the population is decreasing. Again, because the left side, the derivative, the rate of change is equal to the right side. These are called the trajectories, growth for positive, decay for negative. And I draw all of these on a line called the phase line. Of course, this is much better to understand with examples, so let me jump into some. This is an, aut an autonomous equation, with the expression p squared minus p on the right. This differential equation says that the rate of change is equal to the square of the current population minus the current population. Again, that's what these differential equations are, expressions that tell something about how the function changes based on what the current value is is. The roots of the expression on the right are p equals 0 and p equals 1, so those are my steady states. Then I want the trajectories. To find these, I test the right side. What happens if p equals 1 half? Well, 1 half squared is 1 quarter, and 1 quarter minus 1 half is negative 1 quarter, so this is negative. I only need to test one value between 0 and 1, to know that the trajectory there is negative. Now what about p equals 2? 2 squared is equal to 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2. And this is positive. And again, I only need to test one value above the steady state at 1. The trajectory is positive, and I draw an upward arrow. Why did I choose 1 half and 2? Well, I could have chosen any numbers between the steady states, any number between 0 and 1, and then any number larger than 1. I chose 1 half and 2 because they seemed like good choices for the calculation. This is all the data, the steady states and the trajectories. Now let me draw it. I draw a line from 0 to infinity, not taking any negative values because I assume this p of t is population, so negative values don't make sense. I put the steady states as dots at 0 and 1. Then I draw the trajectories, a downward arrow between 0 and 1, since the trajectory was negative there, and an upward arrow above 1, 
since the trajectory was positive there. That's a phase line. Okay, sure, but what does it mean? The points on the phase line are starting values for the population. Please note, they are not time values. There is no time axis here. What this phase line tells me that if the population starts below one in whatever units I'm using, 1,000 or 1 million or whatever, then the population will decay to zero. The trajectory is downward. However, if the population starts above one, again, in whatever units I'm using, it will grow without bound because the trajectory is upward. This is a population which has some kind of minimal threshold, but above that threshold, it will survive. All of this is implicit. Phase lines are a gloriously clever technique because they don't need to solve anything in the equation itself. I don't know what the function p of t is, but I do have a good idea of the behavior of the population when it will grow and decay, at least based on its starting value. Let me do another. This is an, an autonomous differential equation the right factors as p times 4 minus p, so it has roots of 0 and 4. Those are the steady states. Then I test the trajectories between the steady states. Testing it at p equals 2, I get 4 times 2 minus 2 squared, which is 8 minus 4, which is 4. This is positive. This will lead to an upward trajectory. Testing at p equals 5, I get 4 times 5 minus 5 squared, which is 20 minus 25, which is negative 5. This is negative and will lead to a downward trajectory. Now I have all the data, so I draw the phase line. The steady states are dots at 0 and 4. The trajectory between 0 and 4 was positive, so I draw an upward arrow. And the trajectory above 4 was negative, so I draw a downward arrow. I can interpret this phase line. p equals 4 is a steady state. So if the population is ever exactly at 4 in whatever units I'm using, it will stay there, never changing. If it is below 4, it will grow towards 4. And if it is above 4, it will decay down to 4. In this situation, the population can grow, but only up to a certain threshold. Above that threshold, it is not viable and will decay back down to the special value. This is a pretty good idea of how the function behaves how this differential equation describes growth, and this is all without actually knowing anything about the function directly. The behavior in this second example is important enough that it has a name. This phase line describes logistic growth. Exponential growth is the behavior of a percentage growth population without bound. It just keeps going, keeps doubling over some period of time. Logistic growth, however, is growth within bound. It starts out similar to exponential growth, but there is a finite environment. When the population gets close to the limits of its environment, the growth slows and levels off to some number. This number is called the carrying capacity of the environment. As I've shown in this diagram, the behaviors, exponential and logistic, can be derived in rough just from the differential equations using the phase line approach introduced in this video. Just from the DEs, I can identify these two important growth situations.